So in today's video, we're gonna look at how to get events from a Google Calendar and pull them into Google Sheets. So let's jump right in. I have a tab here where we're going to drop those events and I have a couple column headers here. So let's jump into the app script. So go to extensions menu and app script and we'll open that up. And then when this is loaded, we'll just call this pull calendar events. You can call this whatever you want there. And then I'm just gonna call this function pull events. And then let's jump right in. So first of all, we need to access the calendar. And so the way we do that is we'll assign it to a variable called calendar. And then we'll use the calendar app and then dot get. And then there's a couple different options. So you can get all calendars, all own calendars, calendar by ID, or we can just do the default calendar. But if you're looking for that ID, that would be find that calendar and go to settings and sharing. And you want to scroll down until you see the integrate calendar and get that calendar ID right there. And so you can use that for your own or anyone that you've been shared with. And so then what we can do is use our parentheses there, complete that method. And then let's go ahead and access our spreadsheet real quick. So we'll sign that to SS and we'll use spreadsheet app, get active spreadsheet. And then let's continue on our merry way. So with calendar app, you can get events, but you have to specify a start and an end date. So for the purpose of this, we'll just use today as our start date. And so I'll do let start date equals new date. And that will be a new date with today. And then let's do something like add days. And then we could update these as necessary. And then we're going to do let end date. And then this is going to be a couple different things we're going to do here. So first of all, I'm going to wrap the whole thing in new date. And then we're going to do something in here. We're going to do start date get time and what this is going to do is it's going to turn this date into a number and so with this number it's basically milliseconds since i think 1969 if i remember correctly and so what we can do then is plus and then we're going to put this in parentheses and in here we're going to do the add days times 24 hours in a day times 60 minutes in an hour times 60 seconds in a minute times a thousand milliseconds and there we go so now we have a start and an end date and so now we can pull our events so we'll assign that to events and then we'll use that calendar from that we specified right here so calendar dot get events and now we're going to get a list of events from the calendar from today up until 30 days from now. And so as of recording, it's September 2nd. So we're gonna get through till October 2nd or so, um, depending upon the exact time of day. And so what we're gonna do then is we're gonna iterate through this and we'll use a for loop. And I'm gonna drop all these into a array called data. And so then we're gonna do our for loop. So i equals zero, and this is our iterator. And our iterator allows us to Keep track of where we are in this array because basically what we're going to do is so this is a single array and this events is going to be a single array and it's going to have different things within it and so it's going to have you know each event and have different things like the time the title the description etc so what we're going to do here is let's just say let cal equals to events dot i or um i inside these brackets and so what this is going to do is starting at zero, it's going to iterate through each event. And so it's going to start with the first one, second one, so forth. And so here we're picking whatever one that we're at and we're going to call it Cal. And then we can use this to do different things. So if we just take the date like this, this format isn't very friendly. It's like uh, the full date. So it'd be like, you know, today would be September 2nd. 2005 and it would give us the time so like six o'clock p.m central time etc 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 we don't need all that we just need a short date we just need like you know uh nine whatever it is right and so we're going to make that format right here so let's call it start time and if we do cal get start time that's going to be the method to get the time of the calendar event but 
we're going to wrap it in a utilities format date and then we're going to do new date and put that in there and then in this format date we can put our date the next we can put our time zone and then we can pick the format we want to display as and so for the time zone i'm just going to grab it from the spreadsheet and so we do ss because that's where our spreadsheet is assigned to right now and then we can do get spreadsheet time zone and then do our parentheses and then finally we can set a format so it has example format here so this would be month uppercase m and then day is a lowercase d and then y for the year and then they have here as a capital h and that's 24 hour i want to do 12 hours so i'm going to do lowercase h and then mm for the minutes so notice uppercase m is months lowercase m is minutes and then a will show am pm all right so now i'm just going to copy this whole line and paste it and then i'm going to change this to end time and then change this to end time and that will give us our start and end time so i'm going to start putting it together we're going to do data dot push is the method and we're going to create a row and so this is going to be the row that'll show up here and so for each row we're going to push it inside here and at the end we're going to paste it into our google sheet so we can start with our start time and end time and there we go there's our first two so that's our first two columns here and next let's get the title and so we'll just do it right in here so cal dot get title and you can see all the different things you can do when you type get and so you can do you know date created you can get creator color you can get all these different things um, we're going to do get title and then cal dot get i think descriptions next and then location and so notice each one i'm doing a comma and so that's basically one column two column three column and so forth so we're just separating by commas so cal dot get location and then next we have guests and id so i'm going to put guests here as a placeholder and then i'm going to do cal dot get id and the reason is because the guests is a little more complicated so let's do let guests or let guest list equal cal and then we're going to do get guest list and so if we just go into this uh, parentheses here it'll show us an example and so um if we look at this we can add guests we can get guests and so let's just iterate through this real quick so i'm just going to add them to a array called guests um, here and that's what we just put here so this will get pushed in there and we're going to use guest list i'm just going to use a simple method called for each and then arrow syntax here and so what this allows us to do is it's simpler than the for loop because i can do it on a single line and so what i'm going to do is guests push and then i'm going to do x dot and then here you can see what we can do so we can get the name email guest status so maybe we'll try getting the name and so sometimes you won't get the name if they haven't set it and so you might want to default to email but if this is like an internal thing you could do get name so we'll try get name and see how it works and then what i'm going to do here is this is turning into an array which isn't ideal so i'm going to turn this into a string by using join and then let's just join them with a comma and a space between each email and so that's it for the data and so let's go ahead and access our actual sheet so we access the spreadsheet now we need to access this tab it's called calendar so ss get sheet by name and calendar and now we can paste that data so sheet dot get range and we'll start in row two because our headers are in row one so row two and column one so column one and then the number of rows will be how many rows is in data and we'll get that by data dot length and then the number of columns so i could count these so one two three four or, you know or i could count them over here but another way i could do that automatically based on the data is data zero and i'll get the first row and then do length again and so this will get how long it is in rows how long it is or how wide it is in columns and now we can do set values and data all right so now we're ready to run this so we'll click run 
we'll have to authorize permissions to both the Google Sheet and Calendar. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. And then choose our account. And then this is just Google's disclaimer because they did not program it. So go to pull calendar events. And then here we get to select what we want access to. So it needs access to the Google Sheet to make that reference and to the calendar to access the events. So click continue. Oh, I missed something here. I missed. I did get events and I did not put the start and end date in there. So let's go ahead and add that start date, end date. And now let's run it again. And it should be already authorized. So it should go ahead and run. So started and completed. And let's go check. So there are our events. Let's make those a little wider. So if you notice, I just selected both of those, clicked and dragged, and I just picked one and you can resize two columns just like that. And so let's, uh, looks like the names are missing. So if you need to overwrite, so like let's say we're pulling this every day or something like that. And the way you do that, by the way, is go to triggers, add a trigger, and then here's that pull events thing we just did. And then you go to time driven and you can select, you know, if you want to run every day like this, you can select the time of day that you want it to run. You could do it multiple, like every hour and so forth. And so that's just a way you can update. So if you're doing that, and let's say we want to do, you know, a rolling calendar of what's coming in, then we'll want to like flush this because what happens if, you know, we're circling forward, we have less events. So what we want to do then here is sheet dot get range. And then we'll do two, one sheet get last row. And then maybe sheet dot get last column. And then we'll do clear content on that and that will clear it out. Now, one thing to keep in mind with this is if you're doing this from scratch and there's nothing in here, you're going to get an error. And so if that's the case, you know, if you have nothing there, you could just do like this just as a temporary thing. And then if you're always going to have a date after that, you could then, you know, remove those two forward slashes. So what this does and in my screen it turns it green and yours might turn it a slightly different color. But if you put two forward slashes before a line of code, it won't run this line of code. And so it's called commenting out. And so if you remove those, then it'll run again. So another thing you could do if you want to, if you're not sure if you're going to have data in the sheet or not, is you can wrap this in a try and then just do catch just like that. And then this will clear it if there is data or it will catch it gracefully if there's not. So that's the most resilient solution. And so that's what I'm going to use right there. All right, so let's go ahead and run again. And should have the same thing. I did not change it to names, so that's still blank there. Let's go back here and change this to get email. And then I saved it and I'll run it again once it's finished saving. So let's run again now. There we go. Execution completed. And there are our guest emails. So there's our ID. So maybe I'll just left align that. And then maybe you wrap, uh, wrap these just like that. Wrap these titles. And there we go. So if yours aren't showing up like this, it may be because it's like this. So you can just select this. This is the vertical alignment. So you can select middle if you want a line like that. Um, another thing you can do is if you don't want to make these really tall rows, you can do clip instead. And so we could even just select all these, select clip, and then it'll be a single row. Or if you want to revert, you can do wrap, and then it'll go like that. All right, so that's the basics. Let's just wrap this up with, I showed you how to add a trigger, but you may be wondering, you know, if I'm just in here, how can I run this? Do I have to go to the script editor, click run here each time? And so we don't have to, we can actually use a simple custom menu that will show up next to help. And so that's just using function and it has to be on open just like this, because this is the proprietary function name. And then we can do let UI in spreadsheet app dot get UI. And this is accessing the actual UI of the Google Sheet. And then we can do UI and create menu. And so we can call a script menu, you can call it calendar menu, whatever you want is fine. And then we're going to do add item. And then we can do again, we can call this whatever we want. So let's just call it full calendar events. And then the second thing is so this is the title that you'll see. And then next is the function name. And so it needs to match this exactly. 
And so I'm just going to go ahead and copy that and put that inside of double quotes. And then finally, we can do add to UI. And so as simple as that, I'm going to go ahead and save. And then I'm going to pick my on open function from this drop down and we'll click run. And this is just forcing it to show up. The other thing you could do, you don't have to run it from here. You could just come back here and hit refresh and show up again, but it will make that script editor disappear. So I'll just show you real quick. So we hit refresh and that just disappears. So you'd have to rebound it there. But you can see there's our script menu. And so let's just clear this out real quick and see what happens when we run it from here. So you can see the script running and voila, there it goes. So that's how you can run it from the script menu or you can always add from the app script. We can go into this trigger and you can decide a schedule that you want to run uh, based on. And so make sure if you have that on open, they select pull events, not the on open. So pull events, and then you can do your time driven. Another thing you can do is from calendar. But the tricky thing is you can't, like some people be like, oh, calendar, I could just get the latest event. But it, it's kind of funky. You can't pull based on last updated. So you would have to pull all the events anyway. So you could do this as a trigger and just use it to um, pull all the all the events, you know, but uh, otherwise you could just do time driven and then just determine your schedule. All right, so that is it for today's video on pulling events from Google Calendar and getting them into Google Sheets. Make sure to check out the other videos on our channel for more tutorials on both Google Sheets and AppScript. And as always, have a great day.